Sachs, you're saying explicitly you think this is bigger than the internet itself, bigger than mobile as a platform shift. It's definitely top three, and I think it might be the biggest ever. I think, look, I think things could certainly play out the way that Jamath is saying. However, I actually think that OpenAI has demonstrated now with these platform features that it has a lead, a substantial lead. And I actually think that lead is likely to grow in the next year. And let me tell you why. I think it's got a couple of assets here that are hard to replicate. So number one, user attention. I think they've now got, I would guess, hundreds of millions of users. And this thing is caught on like wildfire. It must have been beyond their wildest dream. I think it even surprised them how much this has taken off. It's really captured the public's imagination. And people are discovering new use cases for it every day. If you are sort of the the number two or number three or the seventh large language model to basically get deployed uh, behind a chatbot, I just don't think you're going to get that kind of distribution because the novelty factor will have worn off and people will have already kind of learned to use ChatGPT. So <clears throat> number one is the hundreds of millions of eyeballs. Number two is with this developer platform, I think we should describe a couple of other features of it. One of the problems with ChatGPT, if you've used it, is that the training data ends in 2021. And so you very rapidly, for many questions, get to a stopping point where it says, like, I don't, I don't know the answer to that because I don't have any information about the last two years. Well, one of the plugins that OpenAI has introduced itself is called the browsing plugin. And it allows ChatGPT to go search the internet and not just run internet searches, but to run an internet search as if it were a human. So you ask, you ask ChatGPT a question and it goes to find, it runs a, a search and then it scours through the list of 20 links and it doesn't stop until it finds a good answer. And then it comes back to you with just the answer. So it actually saves you the time of clicking through all those loops and it'll give you the browsing history to show you what it did. That's mind blowing. They also have a thing called a retrieval API, which allows developers to share proprietary knowledge bases with ChatGPT. So if you have a company knowledge base or some other kind of content, you can share with ChatGPT so that ChatGPT can be aware of that. And there are some privacy concerns, but the company has said they're going to sandbox that data and protect it. As an example, I'm planning on writing a book on SaaS using ChatGPT, and I'm going to put together all the previous articles and talks I've done as a database so I can then work with that in ChatGPT. So you're going to have more and more developers sharing information with ChatGPT you're going to have ChatGPT able to update its training based on sort of the last two years, be able to search the internet. And I think that as those hundreds of millions of users use the product and as developers keep sharing more and more of these data sets, the AI is going to get smarter and smarter. And then what's going to happen is both consumers and developers are going to want to use or build on the smartest API. Yeah, see, so this is where so I it think feeds on you're... itself. I mean, yeah, I think there might be a. I agree with much of what you're saying, but I do think somebody like Facebook, when they release their language model, which they're about to, is not going to allow ChatGPT to have any access to the Facebook corpus of data. And then LinkedIn will do the same. They'll block any access to ChatGPT to their data. And so then you might say, you know what, I'm doing something related to business and business contacts, I need to use the LinkedIn one. And they're just going to block other people's usage up and tell you, hey, you have to come to our interface and have a pro account on LinkedIn. And this all becomes little islands of data. And so I, I'm not sure that you may be right, Jake. Cal, it's too early to have a definitive opinion. Yeah. But I would say you have to believe plugins are going to be promiscuous. Yes, no, exactly. Plugins are the refutation of your Facebook idea. Facebook does not have an API. Twitter turned off their API. People who are the smart with data sets, Quora doesn't let people use its data. So I just picked three. Those are three incredible data sets that don't allow people, and Craigslist doesn't. So people who are smart do not allow APIs into their data. They keep it for themselves. I think there were a lot of people when the App Store rolled out that swore up and down. They would never build a mobile app because they didn't want to give Apple that kind of power, that the internet was open, whereas the App Store is closed and curated by Apple. And sure enough, they all, at the end of the day, had to roll out apps, even though in the case of Facebook, it definitely has made them vulnerable because they're downstream of Apple. I mean, Apple now has enormous influence over Facebook's advertising revenue because users have to go through Apple. They never had to do that before with the internet. Nonetheless, Facebook felt compelled to release a mobile app because they knew it was existential for them if yep. they didn't. And I believe that I what's happening one, is- I don't think it's the right analogy. The right analogy would be Google search. Does Facebook, does Craigslist allow their data to be indexed inside of Google search? The answer is no, right? They block that for a reason. They And they will write a cease and desist but letter. Look, fine. So, so you know what? Those guys will stay out of it. But look how much content Google search already has. 
And yeah. I think that ChatGPT will start by eating a substantial portion of search, because again, you don't have to go through the 20 links. It just gives you the answer. It's going to eat a substantial portion of browser usage and app usage, because you're just going to tell ChatGPT what you want to do. It will go book your plane ticket. It will go book your hotel room. Yeah. See, this is a, and another the apps part that want to play in this. Hold on. Yeah. The apps that want to play in this will benefit. So there'll be a powerful incentive for applications yeah. to get an advantage by participating. Let me yeah. finish my point. Yeah. And then eventually they will be forced to do it, not because they get an advantage, but because they're so competitively disadvantaged if they don't participate in that ecosystem. I agree that they'll participate in it, but here's the thing. What's going to happen is Google's going to turn on Bard, and I've been playing with Bard. It is 80% of ChatGPT already. And then when they make Bard a default, you know, little snippet on your Google search return page or Bard is built into YouTube or Chrome or Android, all the Play Store, they're going to roll right over ChatGPT because they have billions of users already. So this advantage that you see today, I see that getting rolled real quick because you'll be on YouTube and on the top right hand side will be Bard. And when you do a search, it's going to say, here are other sentences you could do. Oh, you want to search Mr. Beast? when he's helped people or Mr. Beast, when he's given away more money or people who've copied and been inspired by Mr. Beast, all that's going to occur inside of YouTube. And ChatGPT is not going to have access to the YouTube corpus of data. And then when you do a search, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be on the right hand side and it's going to be playing just like it is in Bing. If you turn on your Android phone, they're going to make Google Assistant go right into Bard. And Google Assistant is already used by hundreds of millions of people. So I think that Google will roll. I think they're going to roll ChatGPT. I don't know who's going to win. But I'm looking at this Saxipu more reductively as a capitalist, which is what are people's incentives? Because that's what they'll do. Google's incentive is to usurp ChatGPT's usage by inserting something inside of their existing distribution channels to suppress the ability for you to want to go to the app. Known as bundling. I think Facebook has that same incentive. Oddly, even though Microsoft is such a deep partner, I think certain assets of Microsoft have that incentive. You're talking collectively about five or six trillion dollars of market cap. Then when you add in Alexa and Amazon and Siri and Apple, what is their incentive? I don't think their incentive is to let this happen. And I think if you look at the Slack Microsoft Teams example of even a better engineer product who's excellent and widely deployed, even at hundreds of millions of users, doesn't much matter when it's more cleverly distributed and priced. And so th those things, again, you may still be right. All I'm saying is it's just so early to know. Mm. And as slow and lumbering as some of these big companies are, they are not so stupid as to kill their own golden goose and or defend it when threatened. So I think you just have to let, let it see what happens.